Hello, I'm Joe Bagnoli, Vice President for Enrollment. I'm pleased to present a summary of the budget challenges facing Grinnell and a range of enrollment management options we are exploring to help address those challenges. A similar version of this presentation has been given to faculty, staff, students, the Board of Trustees, the Alumni Council, and alumni volunteers. It incorporates questions and comments that we have received from these constituents. In the following slides, I will present the basic revenue sources and allocations of Grinnell's budget. I will show you the trajectory, the unsustainable trajectory, we are on. Finally, I will present to you options we are exploring as a community for how to maintain our core values while achieving fiscal sustainability. This is not an emergency. We've chosen to engage a community-wide discussion of our budget before we reach a crisis point. In 2010, President Kington initiated a discussion about the long-term sustainability of the college's funding model. In 2011, he described the importance of having a transparent conversation with all Grinnellians about this topic. At a 2012 retreat of the Board of Trustees in June, Karen Voss, treasurer of the college, described the budget challenge and the range of assumptions and levers that influence total revenue and spending. Then in September and October, Karen and I introduced a range of enrollment management strategies to faculty, staff, students, board of trustees, the alumni council, and alumni volunteers. Similar strategies have been used by various institutions across the country to ensure sufficient revenue from student fees. We are inviting all Grinnellians to learn more about the college's operating budget, the role of endowment spending, gifts to the college, and student revenues. Your feedback on how to resolve the structural imbalance in the budget through a range of enrollment management options is invited and should be provided no later than November 15th. In mid-December, the board will hear remarks on various options from faculty, the Committee on Admission and Financial Aid, the Student Government Association, the Staff Council, and the Alumni Executive Council. President Kington will formally recommend to the board in mid-January a plan for managing enrollment toward fiscal sustainability. The board is expected to take action on President Kington's recommendation in February. Looking at the major resource and allocation levers, under revenues, the college essentially has three revenue streams. The first is net student revenues, which are influenced by enrollment size, the amount of our comprehensive fees, and the extent to which our financial aid program serves to discount tuition. Our next revenue lever is fundraising, which includes both unrestricted and restricted giving. Restricted giving largely has to do with things like grants and contracts for a specified purpose. So in this conversation, we will focus our attention on unrestricted giving, which is available to assist with operating costs. Finally, under revenue sources, we have endowment spending. The allocation to the base budget is a 4% moving average market value of the prior 12-quarter performance, or the prior three years. On the expenditures and transfers side, we look at four things. Compensation, including benefits for faculty and staff. Non-compensation, covering any growth in program-related expenditures. Our debt, which is our repayment and all net interest costs, and then the building maintenance and equipment fund, which we set aside to meet needs like a new roof on a building or new IT equipment. Our current 2012-2013 academic year budget is $97.8 million. Our major revenue sources are endowment spending, which is 53% of the operating budget, net student revenues from tuition, fees, room, and board, less scholarships and grants, accounting for 38%. Gifts and grants related to philanthropic support, plus grant funding, is 6%. And auxiliaries and other is 3%. So if we look at our 2013 budget expenditures and transfers, we see that compensation, salaries and benefits, is 56% of that $97.8 million. We also have 34% going to non-compensation programs. We have 9% going to debt reduction, 
And then the last piece of our pie is the Building Maintenance and Equipment Fund, 1%, which covers unanticipated and or significant multi-year needs and expenditures for facilities and technology. To understand the magnitude of the college's spending on financial aid, if we put institutional grants into that pie and show it as an expenditure, 35% of institutional spending would be on institutional grant aid, 46% would be compensation, and 19% would be all other expenditures. The budget priorities we had when we set this current academic year budget were to remain committed to our financial aid policies, continue to invest in human resources, that's our salaries and an excellent benefits program, plan for and maintain the college's facilities, focus on building revenue-generating infrastructures through fundraising and enrollment management, and foster a culture of innovation. Those were the priorities that framed this board-approved budget. To model a future budget, we have made some assumptions. We left the enrollment flat at 1625 We assumed a comprehensive fee increase of 3%. We looked at the financial need profile for the first-year class only to project net student revenues. The fundraising lever was related to unrestricted giving only. We assumed an increase in salary pools and non-compensation-related expenditures at a rate of 3.5% and 3% respectively. We assumed the building maintenance and equipment allocation was held flat. That the endowment return, net of spending, was zero. So that would assume that we earn a 4% return, less 4% for spending. In this modeling, the operating budget was balanced with allocations from the endowment. Before looking at the future, let's look at a metric called the tuition discount rate and the recent history of student revenues. The tuition discount rate is a common metric used by colleges, universities, and the National Association of College and University Business Officers. It is calculated by dividing institutional scholarships and grants by tuition and fees. Also referred to simply as the discount rate, it helps with comparisons amongst institutions and to project revenues at Grinnell. After projecting comprehensive fees and class size, Projections of the discount rate help to illustrate how much revenue may be associated with each entering class of students. As a result of Grinnell's commitment to meet 100% of demonstrated financial need for every student, the overall discount rate is influenced by the level of financial need represented in an entering class. The greater the financial need of each class, the higher the discount rate, and the lower the net tuition revenue. At most institutions, in order to ensure that each entering class contributes a sufficient sum of revenue toward operational costs, a discount rate goal is established to yield an appropriate level of revenue from student fees. In the context of a need-blind admission process, managing enrollment toward a lower discount rate requires that a higher percentage of admitted students from families capable of making a substantial financial contribution toward comprehensive fees choose to accept our offer of admission. Later in this presentation, additional strategies will be identified that could increase revenues from students. The important points to make now are that the size of the entering class, the comprehensive fee, and the financial need profile of the class determine revenue from student fees, and that a discount rate can be used to model projected revenue from students. In this slide, we show the discount rate since 2001 and also net tuition revenues in each of the years following. In 2008, we increased tuition and fees by 18.5% for first-year students only. Other classes were grandfathered in. We had a huge bump in net tuition revenues and a modest decrease in the discount rate. But in 2009, changes were made to our financial aid policies for all four classes. Things like implementing the loan cap indexing of merit aid, and replacing one summer's contribution with gift aid, terms that can be found in the glossary on the Choosing Grinnell's Future website. Essentially, all of the increased revenues from tuition in 2008 were required to pay for the changes in financial aid policies implemented in 2009. So, net tuition revenue went down while the discount rate went up. 
So if we model our current revenue trends, changing no policies or operational practices, and the market continues as projected by financial analysts to be sluggish in the next several years, we will continue to see less contribution from student revenues to the budget and more imposition on the endowment. As I said previously, this is not yet an emergency. We have a couple of years before feeling the effects of this. But if we continue to have a 2% increase in our discount rate and fundraising remains flat, even more pressure will be put on the endowment to balance our budget. With these assumptions, we project that in 2016, we would be $2.5 million in the red and begin to eat away at endowment principal, essentially compromising our capacity to provide the exceptional educational experience we pride ourselves on providing. Net student revenues are decreasing as a consequence of the financial need profile of new Grinnell students. Philanthropic gifts to Grinnell are insufficient to make up the loss of net student revenues. Many believe the days of double-digit returns on endowments are gone. Financial analysts at the best schools nationally are projecting 0 to 5% market growth, which translates to slow endowment growth, especially if no additional gifts are made to grow an endowment. Simply maintaining the status quo assumes a 3% growth in expenses to keep up with inflation. Without sufficient revenue, it will be impossible to invest in the future of the college. Our academic program is the heart of what we do and requires continued support. When the global financial crisis began, staff and faculty worked together to find new ways to economize, streamline, and reduce costs. Those efforts continue, and we invite your additional suggestions at grinnellsfuture at grinnell.edu. But no matter how frugal we are, providing a high-quality educational experience will be expensive. The core elements of Grinnell's distinctive education, including a highly individualized curriculum and mentored learning experiences, require the intensive commitment of highly trained and dedicated faculty and staff. So do programs in experiential and service learning, career development, and other areas that Grinnell students and their families count as essential. As at any college, a majority of our costs at Grinnell are in labor. It is also important to recognize that while leanness is important, a one-time fixed cut of any amount cannot protect us against a shortfall that will grow every year in pace with inflation and the cost of living, not to mention the emergence of new needs and opportunities. As President Kington has noted, we want to trim the fat, but never so far that we cut into the muscle and bone, harming our ability to provide the very experience we treasure. The endowment has had to compensate for deteriorating net student revenues. In the new market economy, projections of slow growth make dependence upon the endowment riskier. We don't want to overspend the endowment today at the expense of compromise to the future of the college. The college began this year with two reserves, the College Operating Reserve and the Building Maintenance and Equipment Fund. The College Operating Reserve provides flexibility to meet unanticipated budget demands. For example, bringing in a class with greater financial need than we expected, or having a rough winter with utilities higher than projected. We started the year with a $4 million buffer in that reserve. The Building Maintenance and Equipment Fund begins the year with a $2.2 million balance to cover unanticipated needs, as well as helping to manage the impact of periodic, multi-year, significant expenditures for facilities and technology. And the Strategic Fund started with $17.8 million this year to help facilitate strategic initiatives and encourage innovation. We need to invest in our future, in our faculty, in our programs to make sure that the education we provide is extraordinary for our future students. We cannot afford to lose the most important asset of Grinnell, the quality of teaching and learning, the amazing educational experience that we exist to provide. For this reason, President Kington exhorts us to be bold while we fix the structural imbalance in our budget. What do we learn when we put this all together? Here are the takeaways. The status quo is not financially sustainable. Grinnell has a structural problem that was referenced in a recent report from Standard & Poor's. They affirmed our AAA rating, but their report included a notable comment 
that, quote, failure to identify effective funding model will lead to an uncertain future, unquote. The financial cushion that we had in 2008 to weather the economic storm is gone. A repeat could significantly compromise our college operations. Increases in institutional scholarships and grants have outweighed increases in comprehensive fees. And net student revenues are the one variable the college can most reliably influence in the near future. The college is looking at multiple ways to address the budget challenge. We continue to consider prudent cost-saving strategies and diversification of revenue streams, and we're working closely with our alumni leadership groups on ways to increase philanthropic support all of which could have a meaningful impact. But as you will see, enrollment management strategies and the financial aid we award have the potential to make a significant difference in the near term. Since some of our admission and financial aid policies take us close to the core values of the college, we wanted to share this information and host an open, transparent discussion about them with all of you. The characteristics of the student body reflect our mission the Office of Admission has intentionally identified students with demonstrated academic potential who are engaged citizens, represent robust diversity, and reflect our commitment to access and equity. Until now, there has been less urgency to understand the relationship of student revenues to the college's operating budget. President Kington has asked that our recruitment and admission processes reflect an expectation that each new class of entering students will continue to represent the core values of the college and help us achieve fiscal sustainability. Recognizing the dynamic tensions in these characteristics, one value is not to be pursued at the exclusion of others. Nevertheless, without a fiscally sustainable budget, our long-term capacity to maintain all of our commitments will be challenged. Academic excellence, diversity, and the exercise of social responsibility require a significant financial investment. That is why the Grinnell community has started a conversation about the various options for increasing the contribution student revenues make to the operating budget. The amount of revenue generated through student fees is closely related to the financial need profile of enrolled students. In a three-year time period from 2008 and 9 to 2010-11, the percentage of Grinnell students with high financial need increased by approximately 10%. Given our commitment to meet 100% of demonstrated financial need, a growing share of institutional resources has been required to keep Grinnell affordable for its student body. Pell grants are available only for low-income students, and the percent of Pell-eligible students can be used to compare low-income student enrollment at Grinnell and elsewhere. Compared to the average, a 45% of full-pay students enrolled at other need-blind institutions that meet 100% of demonstrated financial need. Grinnell enrolls a class of which only about 10% paid the full comprehensive fee. While Grinnell admits a high number of students who could contribute the entire comprehensive fee, we have not been successful in convincing those students to attend. If our goal is to increase student revenue, Grinnell will need to enroll fewer high-need students, more low-need students, or some combination of the two. Grinnell has loyal alumni. However, that loyalty is not as often expressed through gifts to Grinnell as it is by alumni gifts to those institutions that also observe a need-blind admission policy and that meet 100% of demonstrated financial need. Those institutions closest to us in net student revenue also enjoy considerably greater philanthropic support than we do. Other institutions have been able to afford a need-blind admission policy while meeting 100% of financial need because they either have high net student revenue or high levels of giving per enrolled student. Grinnell has neither. It is noteworthy that many alumni have recently expressed their support of Grinnell's commitment to the social cause of need-blind admission. Some have made first-time gifts, and others have increased their gifts to help Grinnell students. We are enormously grateful. But right now, alumni giving at Grinnell is still considerably lower than that of alumni of other need-blind institutions. We believe that can change, and that increased giving could significantly improve the college's financial outlook while helping us preserve core values. But with an uncertain market economy and a current alumni giving pattern so much lower than our peers, 
Grinnell has to examine ways to manage enrollment that preserve as much of a commitment as possible to the institutional values we all hold dear. Grinnell has no intention of admitting students with financial need and offering less financial aid than required for them to enroll. That is a common practice across the U.S., but we believe it is unfair to admit someone without regard for their need, offer them this great opportunity, and then leave them to figure out how to pay for it without our help. That's a path that can lead to unacceptable levels of educational debt, or the unfortunate choice of a promising student having to pass up a college education that was within their grasp academically, but out of reach financially. Nor are we seeking revenue at any expense. We have modeled a number of possible enrollment management initiatives and with diligence have considered their potential impact on our student body. However, we are not actively considering those choices that would have a pronounced negative effect on our academic profile, the representation of domestic students of color, or the enrollment of first-generation students. We are considering the impact of possible initiatives on the total number of students across the socioeconomic spectrum of our student body. But I want to be perfectly clear with the Grinnell community that if we are to address the structural imbalance in the budget through enrollment management strategies, a reduction in the financial need profile of each entering class must occur. Finally, we have considered the impact of each strategy on annual net tuition revenue for the first year of implementation and the annual impact of revenue following four full years of implementation for each entering class. This leaves us with several possible strategies to examine. The average Grinnellian graduated last year with about $15,000 of educational indebtedness. One possibility is that we require new students to assume a modestly larger portion of financial responsibility by raising our loan cap. We find that our merit aid program increases yield on offers of admission, especially among those who can contribute substantially to our comprehensive fee. Therefore, we might expand that program. Admitted students from Iowa typically have a lower tuition discount than those from out of state, so we could increase their enrollment. We could discontinue the unusual practice of increasing merit aid to offset inflation in comprehensive fees. Currently, we increase a student's merit award by the percent increase in our comprehensive fee. We have been able to identify only one other institution in the country that shares this practice, and eliminating it is one strategy available to us. We could increase the percentage of the class that is admitted at early decision. That would most likely increase the percentage of students enrolled who can make a stronger financial contribution. We could observe less leniency in missed financial aid application deadlines or employ a more common financial aid methodology that results in a calculation of less demonstrated financial need for admitted students. Presently, we admit international students through a need-aware decision process. We could increase the number of international students who can contribute more toward comprehensive fees or decrease the discount rate associated with their enrollment. Or we could introduce an early action program and promote more commitments to attend Grinnell by students with access to greater financial resources. We have explored introduction of a spring admission program that could help generate additional revenue through increased enrollment. We could also consider eliminating the exemption we offer to many Grinnellians who participate in special learning opportunities during the summer in lieu of working. Finally, we could become need aware in the final stages of the application reading process and enroll a higher percentage of students who can contribute toward our comprehensive fee. This concludes a summary of the context and the financial aid strategies under consideration. You'll find much more information, including answers to frequently asked questions and opportunities to share your opinions or make a gift at www.grinnell.edu forward slash Grinnell's Future. We look forward to your feedback as this process unfolds in the coming weeks. Please remember that President Kingtim will be discussing recommendations with the board in January. So your responses must be received by November 15th to have their greatest impact. Thank you again for listening and for your commitment to helping us choose a great future for Grinnell.